All right, so we're going to be looking at the GitHub integration available in Replit. Um, to start off with, what I'd like to talk to you about is what you're going to learn. Uh, you're going to be able to link your Replit account to a GitHub repository. You're going to be able to create and update repositories from Replit, and you're going to download and change existing repositories from GitHub. Um, so why should we even care about GitHub integration and Replit? Well, from an educator's perspective, it allows you to manage and track progress. Um, so your students can see their versions as they complete things. It allows them to track things um, and also uh, make sure that they don't lose their progress. Um, additionally, it makes group work and group projects uh, much more manageable. Um, it's an industry standard tool, and one of the other things that's very important as well is that students can even create a portfolio of work out of this. So if they are uh, creating a number of files throughout the course of multiple years when they're working with you, then they can actually set up their own GitHub web page that has a link to all their repositories or public repositories that they create, and they can then showcase that portfolio when they're looking for jobs. Um, it's actually something that's uh, considered quite valuable when applying for positions. So. Um, some of the prerequisites you need to have before starting this tutorial is you need to have an internet connection, you need to have a Replit account, and you need to have a GitHub account. So if you haven't created um, your GitHub account, more than likely you have a Replit account, but if not, you need to go ahead and create both of those. It's just github.com is the website, so we'll just go there real quick so you can see that. So github.com, you can create an account. They are free by just clicking on sign up. Um, and then once you have signed up and you've gotten that all done, then you'll be able to follow along with this tutorial. So um, let's jump back here first and look at some of the things that I've done in this file that we're going to set up with our version control. So this is one way of doing um, your GitHub connection, which is to create files in Replit and then basically push them to a repository um, that you have on GitHub. The other option is to pull a repository down from GitHub and change it. So once we've created something, you'll see that if I go to the file manager here, I have this text file. If I just create a very simple uh, factorial program that when I run it, it spits out a number based on the factorial number that I put in here. So I can change it, run it again, it gives me a larger number. So I have these two files here and I want to have this factorial project um, put into GitHub so that I can share with other people. First thing I'm going to do is click on version control, and you'll notice that connect to GitHub is one of the first options here. And there's some other things here that we're going to look at eventually. I'm just going to expand this out so we can see this. But I'm going to click on connect to GitHub, and it's going to ask if I want to connect it. I'm going to click on that button. And then again, you already have to have had an account created. It's going to ask you for your account and sign in. And I'm going to go ahead and choose that. And then I'm going to choose either all the repositories that are there or only select repositories. Uh, for this, I'm just gonna choose all repositories. Only select repositories will let you choose the specific ones that you want to allow it to have access to. Uh, so again, depending on your level of complexity as a user, you can make that uh, decision, but the default of all repositories is fine for your average educator that's um, just learning how to start with GitHub. So install and authorize, and then we should be good. So once you're back to this screen, then you should be able to see that you still have your version control window and there's this connect to GitHub button again. So we're actually gonna click on that and it's gonna ask us based on that user account, what repository we want to create. Now, repository is essentially like a folder in GitHub. So it's gonna store all the files that are related to this particular REPL. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna type in whatever the name of the repository is it's gonna be. I can even put a description like this is a test. And I can choose whether it's gonna be a public or private and then I click on Create GitHub Repository. Now that that's done, you'll see that I have the GitHub icon here. This will all be visible and colored in now that it's ready. And it tells me this is the name of the repository. And it'll say Branch Master. Uh, currently, I don't have any other branches. I could add branches by clicking on the plus here. Uh, but for this case, we're just going to try to keep it simple. Um, I'm going to say, what did I change? This is going to be my first commit with all files. So uh, not a lot of times we'll do an initial commit that just has everything that we created to this point. It'll tell you what files have changed. Okay, so for example, this one has been modified and this one is new since my previous commit. I'm then gonna click commit and push. And what it's gonna do is on GitHub, it's gonna create that repository and it's going to push that. And so I'll see that I have my initial commit, my first commit, and then if I go to my repositories, I'll see 
test git integration. And if I click on that, I can actually see there's my main.py file and my objectives.txt file. I click on that and there's the code that I have. Again, nice thing is I can go and change this. So let's say that I've made those commits, I've got everything there, and I want to change the factorial number to, let's say, five again. I've made a change. And you'll notice that here it says one modified file or folder. And I have main.py is the one that's been modified. It's marked with that M. If I mouse over it, it shows me that. I can go ahead and say, what did I change? Change the factorial number to five. Okay. Um, one of the things that's kind of difficult to appreciate if you don't understand Git Bash and some of the things that go on behind the scenes with this is this is very elegant in terms of making it really simple. Um, if you were doing this in other software, doing the commits, creating the commit file and the comments and everything else are all separate steps. This makes it very seamless. So it's a really nice uh, solution to utilizing this. So I'm gonna click commit and push and we'll see, change the vectorial number five. And what you'll notice is that as you look down each of these versions, I can see, and then I can also revert back to them. So if I didn't want that change, I can click revert to here and it will take me back a step. So if I go and look at my code here and I refresh it, so remember it was nine, now it's five. If I didn't like that for some reason, then I can go back here and revert to here. And you'll notice that it brings my code back to where it was nine. Now what you'll also notice is that I haven't, done any other changes, but my main.py now says it's modified. So again, I could go back in here and said reverted to previous version or there were errors or whatever happens to be, commit and push, and it will bring me back to that particular one. Notice that if I don't commit, click on commit and push, then this code will not align with GitHub. So if I go here, even if I refresh it, it's still gonna say five, right? Because I have not committed and pushed it yet. So um, that change of nine will not take place until I hit commit and push. And that's important to keep in mind simply from the perspective that if we're talking about iterative design, we don't want to make a ton of changes and then commit. We want to make incremental changes and commit each time so we can always roll back to previous versions that were known working versions. So um, again, commit, uh, committing and pushing should be done regularly. Um, just like back when you had to save things before autosave became a thing. Uh, so that is the basics on how to create a link to a GitHub account and then to create a file, push it up to a new repository. But let's say that I want to go and pull a repository and do things with it. So I'm going to go back to my account here. And if I go and click on the plus here, then I have the option here to import from GitHub. And you'll notice that since I've already linked my repositories, I see there's the test git. Here's another one that I've called replit demo. So I'm gonna click on that and I'm going to import from GitHub. And what you'll notice is it takes me to the coding window. This is all bash stuff that's going on with GitHub that's telling it to create that information. And then I can go here and version control. Look at that. Repl demo. So I could then go add files, change this content, all those things, and then make commits and pushes just like I would have if I created the file from scratch. So that's one of the neat things that is, is that I can go and create as many repositories as I want to in GitHub and pull them down selectively as I start working on them, uh, or I can create them in Replit and create the repository in GitHub and push it all in one screen, which again is a very nice feature of that. So that's how you can link with GitHub and either create or pull repositories.